Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. Are guitar lessons or instrumental lessons in general really useful or are they a waste of your money? I think this is a topic that is really often coming up both in comments on my videos but also just in on the internet in general such as uh, Facebook groups and Reddit and forums and stuff like that. It is an interesting topic because I think the role of a guitar teacher or an instrumental teacher has really changed within the last 20 or so years. But at the same time, I think there are really a lot of important things that are missing in those discussions. And I think a lot of the time, really the essential parts of, parts of what a teacher does are missing from this discussion. So that's what I want to talk about in this video. And of course, I'm a professional musician, but I'm also a teacher. And as you probably know, I have a YouTube channel with a lot of lessons. So I'm really busy passing on information and trying to help people play better. And I'm not objective in this, but I do think I have some experience and some insight that you might find useful if you're thinking about whether you should take lessons. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, improve the way that you solo, check out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. Let's first talk a little bit about what you don't actually need to get from your teacher and that is information. So this may seem strange because of course, if you're having lessons, you are going to get information from your teacher. You're going to get uh, scales to practice, pieces to learn uh, and stuff like that. But really that's not what you need a teacher for because all the, that information is already available and you can find it in books, you can find it in videos on the internet. There are a lot of really good free YouTube videos I've heard. So you can find that in all other places and you don't really need the teacher to tell you about this. Even if you're into some more sort of exotic or you have a, a special piece that nobody else has checked out, you can order transcriptions of it. And there are ways to get material of, for pretty much anything. You can find pretty much any arpeggio or any chord voicing or any scale just using Google. And probably with these things, you can actually also find them for free. But you probably also already know that just finding that arpeggio or finding that scale is not the same as having it in your playing and being able to play a meaningful solo with it. And I think that's really where your, the teacher can come into the picture and can help you speed up that process. And that's also really what you're paying him or her for. Let's say you're coming in for a first lesson, then hopefully you're playing something for the teacher or with the teacher, or at least you're explaining something about what you can already play and then also talk about what you would like to learn, what is it you want to achieve with the lessons. Uh, and in that way, give the, the teacher a picture of what is going on, where you want to go. And here's what you're then actually going to be paying the teacher for. Choose what to work on and in what order to work on it. From the way that you play and from the things that you're talking about in terms of the music that you like and what you would like to learn and how you would like to learn to play, the teacher should be able to have an idea about, okay, you're here. And the next thing you should be able to check out or you should be able to play and also be able to learn should be this. And you need to work on this. And that means that there's some decision making happen, happening where you don't have uh, all the advice on YouTube, but you only have one or two exercises that you start working on. And that's what's going to help you. If you have to figure this out by yourself, then you really have to sort through a lot of information. It takes a lot of time and that's actually going to hold you back in the long run. A good teacher should be able to make a plan for, our, for a student in terms of finding some smaller goals that they have to achieve and that that's going to help them work in, in the direction that they want to go. And I think this is something that you'll find a lot of experienced teachers can do this and can actually also generate sort of a, a longer plan from, from here we go here and from here because you get used to thinking like that and what works when you're teaching a lot. But at the same time, there are also a lot of teachers who don't really think like this and don't have an order to their lessons in that way. And that can be tricky because it may me, may also mean that you the lessons don't fit with you. Uh, they're anyway not based on how you're playing. Uh, so that's something you want to discuss with teachers as well, that they have an overview of what is going on, where we're going next, uh, and why we're working on the things that we're working on in the lesson. So for example, if you're learning how to improvise with a minor pentatonic scale, then first thing is to learn the minor pentatonic scale, let's take A minor, then of course in learning it, maybe there's something about learning some patterns in it. And then you'll try to learn 10 licks in the minor pentatonic scale. So you can go or 
and so on and so forth and you have all these licks and then you start trying to improvise with it and then you start trying to write your own licks and hopefully that's what's going to teach you how to improvise with the scale. If you miss out on any of these steps then it's going to be much more difficult to get the improvising part right obviously because you're not developing some important aspects of knowing the scale. If you're teaching yourself you're probably taking a method that's in a book or on a website or in a course and that is general is not tailor-made for you and it may not fit you and it also may not be exactly what you should study and it, or cover the gaps that you uh, you might have in the way that a teacher might be aware of this uh, and the same goes of course if you're not following a method like that then you're just trying to take uh, loose information from around the internet and then choose the right piece of information and you can already hear when i'm describing it like this that that's also something that's very tricky to get right listen and evaluate let's say that you figure out what to play over a D minor 7. So you can play your D minor 7 chord uh, and you know that in order to improvise over this then you can use the C major or D Dorian scale depending on how you approach that. But when you're improvising it kind of sounds a little bit boring and a little bit uninspired. If you're working by yourself it can be difficult to really figure out how to improve on it. You already know that you're playing the right scale and it is the chord and you can see how it fits together but you don't really have a teacher to tell you that maybe you should learn some diatonic arpeggios so you don't only play stuff that's running up, the, up and down the scale or maybe you need to work on playing actual phrases because it's just all rambling and, and nothing has a beginning and an end just to suggest some things that might be wrong. So this kind of feedback is something that you're not going to find in a YouTube video or on a blog post. And the only other way that you could probably get that is to post your music and your playing online and then hope for feedback. But I mean, if you're posting your video somewhere or your MP3 of you playing like this, then I would say that 80 to 90% of the feedback you're going to get is going to be completely useless because it's going to come from people who uh, you don't know and they don't know you. So they don't really have any kind of reference to what you're doing and what is going on. They're just going to say the first thing that comes into their mind and probably it's going to say more about them than it's going to say about your playing. The main reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that I have a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. I'm very grateful for that and if you want to help me keep making videos then check out my Patreon page. If you join us over on Patreon I can also give you something in return for your support. In the D-7 example I think it's clear that the role of the teacher is to listen to how you're improvising and use the information, analyze what is going on and then in that way help you find sort of the next step, the next thing you should be working on and practicing and in doing that also guide you to the next level for your playing. Another thing that is extremely useful is that hopefully already in the learning process you can get some feedback on how things are working, if it's improving, if it works or if you should maybe find a completely different approach to learning this skill and approach it from another angle. And this is almost impossible to achieve if you're just working for yourself and you can't really figure out if things are working. There are lots of examples where a, more, a set of more experienced ears can tell a lot more. There are just a lot more things that they know about that you can't hear and that you don't have the experience to tell whether this is the problem for your playing. You can only tell that there's something wrong, but you can almost never really figure out what it is. Good examples of this in jazz are things that are usually like rhythm and timing and phrasing based because those are things where if you have a problem with that then most beginner improvisers don't really have the ear training and the skills to really figure out that that is the problem. You need to train your ears to be able to hear how somebody's swing feel is or if they're rushing or not or if the accents are all on the heavy beats and you're not just naturally going to be aware of this and you need to, yeah, there are different ways that you can fix it but you can't fix it until you realize that that is the problem. And very often people will find themselves just having the problem, but not being able to figure out what the problem is. And in that way, it's also extremely difficult, of course, to, to do something about it. And I would imagine that in other genres or styles on guitar, then topics like vibrato or muting are quite similar. The stuff that you need to train your ears to really be able to hear where the problem is. Obviously, I am a teacher besides being a jazz musician. Uh, but at the same time, I'm also a student. I've had lessons from a lot of very good teachers. And I think that the things that I'm covering in this video are really the things that I've taken away from what you really need a teacher for.
If you want to check out another video about some of the things that are really important to keep in mind when you're trying to learn jazz guitar, then check out this video on the 10 commandments of learning jazz. If this is the first time you see one of my videos and you want to learn more about jazz guitar, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.